My name is Jen Holt. I'm excited to be here. So excited. I pressed the mute button twice and remuted myself. I am a sixth and eighth grade math teacher and the math department head. And I'm here with my colleague, Kara Riedel today. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Kara Riedel and I'm a sixth and seventh grade math teacher. And I'm also the sixth grade team leader. Jen and I are really excited to share with you the core components of our, of our middle school math program philosophy. We work to develop mathematical thinking that's really more than just a student's ability to solve the problem. A program that's committed to helping students develop the skills they need to go beyond the walls of the classroom. And that uh, critical thinking, problem solving, the ability to collaborate and communicate, those are all at the core of our program. Each day we help students build upon these skills through multiple means, which Jen and I are gonna discuss more in the slides to come. Thank you. So discovery and investigation are at the heart of our teaching. We believe that students acquire mathematical understanding by exploring concepts first concretely through the use of manipulatives and pictorial representations. We then apply that understanding to an algorithm and then finally move toward a more complex application of the concept. And so in these images here, you can see this progression. You know, this, this represents a fifth graders uh, or a sixth graders acquisition of decimal division through first the concrete and then to the more abstract. We have a strong emphasis on depth of knowledge and our curriculum is not just, is not just about a surface skim. Students are exposed to activities which will allow them to engage in what we call a productive struggle. Uh, we encourage students to move beyond their comfort zone and we want them to engage in thinking that's deep and challenging. And we have three, uh, three examples up here on the screen for you. And in the first of these, um, we ask students, you know, just to do a simple evaluation, we're asking three to the fourth power and it's just an application of procedural understanding. In the second example, we're asking students to think a little bit deeper about how they would use their understanding of exponents to arrive at an answer of 64. And then in our third example, we're really asking students to think critically, and dig deep into their understanding of exponential notation to determine the largest number possible, which I don't know if you can see it, but that's the requirements of that question that's being asked. We love to be hands-on in the middle school. And uh, we integrate numerous opportunities throughout all of the grades to engage in hands-on learning. Uh, these activities allow students not only to apply what they're learning, but it also allows them to get really creative and allow their creativity to shine. And so we have a few examples that we wanted to share with you today. And in, in the first picture, we have uh, some fifth graders who are programming a Sphero to engage in a decimal addition and subtraction assignment. And, uh, in the second picture, we have a student applying concepts of slope to design a roller coaster. And in our third picture, we have a, a group of girls who are applying what they know in their study of circles to create a Mars rover. And that we use those Mars rovers in a, in a little, um, little class contest at the end of that. And so hands-on is such a huge part of what we do and we, we feel really strongly about it and we integrate it, we integrate it very regularly. All of the classes in the math program in the middle school are designed to meet students, you know, with the level of understanding with which they arrive. And we provide many opportunities for students to have the support that they need to go beyond that. And also for students to really extend their understanding and, and dig deeper critically. So we meet math classes in the middle school meet nine days out of a 10 day rotation. And within that rotation, students have the benefit of having a second, a second math teacher in their classroom. And the purpose of that teacher, that teacher is called the resource teacher. And, and their purpose is to really get in there, work in smaller groups with students and to just uh, meet the needs of them. Sometimes it's in, in a reinforcement, other times it's really in an extension or an enrichment activity. So it really just varies on the needs of who's in the class. 
So we do have a math team, which uh, Jen Holt leads, and I'm going to turn it over to her at this point so she can tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Um, so we do enrichment throughout our regular classes, but we also have a math team for students who are interested in tackling more challenging problems in a team atmosphere. Our math team participates in the Math Counts competition, which is a national competition. Um, and in a normal year, that looks like um, we go to local universities that hold chapter level and state level competitions and compete against schools uh, and students in middle schools across the state. That program has moved online this year, um, but it's still a great opportunity for students to, um, again, experience sort of a team atmosphere and try some really challenging problems. Um, <laughs> this slide kind of makes me laugh because everyone uses technology in math classrooms this year, um, but I wanted to keep it in there because we've been using technology in our math classrooms for a long time and will continue to do so long after um, we're all required to be uh, virtual in a lot of ways. We use technology not just to deliver content or stand up and lecture, but to really allow students to engage with the content more deeply. So students can use technology to demonstrate understanding. They can apply um, different software to their math classes. This is an example um, from an eighth grade class just the other week where three students were working collaboratively in an online whiteboard program. And so they're talking to each other, but then also completing a task um, exploring intercept and slope. We also love math as math teachers and we want the students to as well. So we try to bring in a lot of fun activities. We do a lot of games, a lot of puzzles. Um, these are just a couple of examples. We want students to kind of play with the math that is our regular content, but then we also bring in things that allow them to um, think critically, to uh, experience maybe spatial reasoning and other things that might not be part of our everyday curriculum, but are a lot of fun to play around with. So we challenge and encourage kids to play with math on a regular basis. This slide just talks about the progression through the middle school math program. In our fifth grade program, we have heterogeneous groups and we differentiate within the classroom. In sixth grade, we have differentiated sections which support student learning. And we also have an option for students to take seventh grade math during their sixth grade year if that's an appropriate placement for them. In seventh grade, again, we continue with dif differentiated sections. And there is an option for seventh grade students who have completed seventh grade math already to take algebra one in seventh grade. And then eighth grade, most of our students are taking algebra. Um, again, we have the differentiated sections and there are also some students who are taking geometry if they've completed algebra one and taking geometry in eighth grade. And our last slide here just shows uh, the pathways through the upper school math program. So if you're thinking beyond just middle school, um, you can see that some students might begin with algebra in ninth grade, but many students have already taken algebra in eighth grade. So they're jumping in into either geometry or geometry with trig. Um, and from there, there are multiple ways to move through the program. Um, and then the highest level students are making it up through calculus two and three.